Oh no! To the Hodag Lair! There he is! Now I slice this lizard into tiny pieces. Watch out and don't get in my way! Everything alright? You want to go alone? You bet! But I'll ca I call if I need you. Maybe we should help you after all? You think I'm a young pup? I don't need help! She frowns slightly, but stay close. Call if I need you. Amiri unleashes a fearsome battle cry and charges toward the monster. Hog! I wounded it! Come finish finish it off! I always survive. The weak suffer. I endure. Yeah. That's this isn't exactly the type of creature that you can fuck with on your own, Brosif. Oh, really? You my hand. That's aggravating. To make this swift. Uh, of course it fizzled. Maybe I should just spam that. Oh! He finally died! Ha! One more down! Amiri kicks the remains of the monster with her boot and thrusts her chest out. Are you hurt? Scratches, Amiri shrugs. Got some new scars! You don't have to prove anything to me. I already know you're brave. And a skilled warrior. Proof? <laughs> We killed it! It is enough! Congratulations, so what now? Ready to move on? Hunt new monsters? Ha! Was born ready! Enemies, huh? Uh, Venom Hydra. I'm not afraid. So it's come to this. Uh. God damn it. It's dead already? I was expecting way more than that. I was expecting to get fucking destroyed. The hills seem pleasant, even welcoming. No grey doom and gloom, just walking along the path and enjoying the view of all the cute little white pyramids built out of pebble stone. Oh wait, was it pebble stone? Horrors of horrors! What I mistook for pebbles were polished bones! All along the path, the grass was riddled with pyramids made of polished cobalt remains. 
It got us thinking. Is it wise to follow such a grim path the way marked by death its... Uh, elf? Defying all danger, we followed the path. Trying to brush away thoughts on who may have polished the cobalt vertebrae and why, we, we quickly moved along the path leading through the pale hills. It didn't take long for us to reach a mountain river with a bridge crossing over it. Well, bridge may be a bit generous. It, generous. it was actually just a long branch about as thick as an arm spanning from one bank to the other. It may have been enough for a cobalt to cross, since we could see another of those small bone pyramids on the far side, but it didn't look nearly enough for our babadobada. For deciding to proceed, blah blah blah. We quickly discovered that the river was quite deep. I plunged my arm shoulder deep into the water and couldn't even feel the bed. It was fast, too. Yeah, whatever. Hmm. We'll see. Lindsay was unperturbed by the thin branch and, and the speeding current. After a deep breath, our volunteers set forth along the precarious crossing. One step, then another. A few feet crossed with no trouble. And I started to think that maybe things would be fine. Then, then when the branch... That's when the branch jerked and started to shake. It was rolling over! With no time to think, all Lindsay could do was... Jump to the other side! Oh, the lengths will go... Two in our efforts to keep our pride untarnished and our pants dry. One incredible jump and Lindsay was on the other bank. Lindsay took a moment to catch her breath and turned her attention back to the crossing. A nearby shrub concealed an amusing cobalt contraption. A crooked ladder built from random planks and sticks. It seems the kobolds crossed the river in much the same way we had, sending their most agile companion across to fling the ladder over to the other side. Losing no more time, we crossed the river. One small pyramid made of polished cobalt bones may be a bit spooky, but it's not unbearable. How about thousands? We found ourselves looking over a proper cobalt graveyard. Each little pyramid a mark of cobalt death. That mark, and that mark made out of their own remains. Yeesh! The real enigma, though, waited in the heart of the burial ground. The centerpiece was made of hundreds, maybe even thousands of, thousands of polished bones all put together to form the head of an enormous dragon. Iman imagine it. These small, nonsensical reptiles somehow managed to create a sculpture both fearsome and magnificent. Such might, and yet such frailty as well. If a single bone were to be removed from the foundation, this beautiful statue would crumble to dust. And I even spotted one, son, one such flimsy bone. Regardless, we'd come face to face with irrefutable proof. For the kobolds, for better or worse, were changing. This news cl was clearly sacred. Uh, this news had no impact on our search for the trolls, though. The land was clearly sacred to the kobolds, and it seemed unlikely they would bring their new friends here. But how would the Baron deal with the structure we found in his realm? Respect it. Following my advice, the Baron adjusted the dangerously loose bone in the hope of reinforcing the remarkable composition. His grace was standing to leave when a glint from the dragon's jaw drew his attention. Carefully reaching inside, the Baron pulled out what seemed to be a dirty stone. Beneath an outer layer of clay, we found a large, finely cut emerald. It seemed the kobold, kobold spirits decided to grant us a gift. Stowing the offering in his bag, the Baron turned and left. We dutifully followed our leader, and soon the bizarre kobold burial ground was far behind us. Well, that happened. Cobalt Camp! Ah, uh, maybe Chief Suitscale is here. You see a gang of kobolds resting around a campfire. When they finally notice you, they jump up and start scuttling around, making a mess and bumping into each other, all the while muttering something in their hissing language. 
One kobold emerges from the swarming crowd, his scales are a touch lighter than those of his companions. Upon closer inspection, he seems to be extremely old. His skin is dry and lifeless, and he clearly lost some, his, some of his scales long ago. There's something curious about that, this kobold. He seems to be calm, confident, and... wise? Okay. Greetings, he says, addressing you and sticking out his hand. Uh-huh, they're so cute. Uh, shake the kobold ha kobold's hand. Yes, you shake the kobold's hand. He's It's slimy and cold. He continues to stare, his eyes still yellow and emotionless. Humans love, yes, the old kobold says. Okay, it seems he's in love with you. The old kobold seems to have said his piece, so he just continues to stare at you with cold, still eyes. Tartuk, what a familiar name. Tell me, do you know the story of the Suitscale Kobold tribe? What? Alright, let's get this sorted out. All of the kobolds are staring at you now. No blinking or movement among them. It's starting to get uncomfortable. Tartuk trolls love. Search Tartuk kobold. Huh. I think I understand what they're trying to say. It seems that King Tartuk is lost somewhere, and they're looking for him. But it sounds like he's become friends with trolls now, so I'm not sure it would be wise to help them. Sure. Unable to judge the expression on his snout, you can't tell if the kobold believed you. After your answer, he turns away from you as if you cease to exist. The kobolds quickly gather and leave into the woods. Okay. Huh. That was... odd.